What's going on? I'm going to be going over my opinion and review over this. This is the RG350. It's a handheld emulator, so let's get into it. So here's the device itself. It has a 3.5 inch backlit display. It has dual analog sticks. They both click in. It has the A, B, X, Y face buttons. Start, select. A nice D-pad. On the top, they have the have R1, R2, L1, and L2, two USB-C ports, a mini HDMI, and a headphone jack. On the bottom, there's the power, the SD card slot, the volume rocker, and a reset button. For the emulators, it comes with MAME, DOSBox, FBA, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Genesis, Open Boar, Wonder Swan, PlayStation 1, another Genesis, SNES, the Neo Geo Pocket, Game Boy Advance, another SNES one, PC Engine, regular Neo Geo, and another MAME. Next it has the apps. It just has a clock, a file explorer, a video player, a music player, and some button testers. I do recommend using the button tester just to make sure all of them work when you get your device. Then it has the free games. These are all just like open source games that just come on these type of systems. Here I'm just going to play through the Super Mario Bros level for the NES just to show how the emulation works. As expected it handles it with no problems. I would say that the placement of the D-pad, it does leave a little to be desired. It's kind of a little low for my taste, you don't really have anything to grip on. But besides for that, the system is pretty comfortable to hold. And I've heard about other people complaining about the right thumbstick getting away of your thumb, but I haven't had problems with that at all. Next up, I'm going to show some SNES emulation. For most games, it works perfectly fine. There are a few games that I've played that it just doesn't quite work for. You have to use frame skip, and then it makes the games feel a little weird. It's something you can get used to, but all the games that I've actually tried, they all have a Game Boy Advance port, and that works fine on this. So I would just play the Game Boy Advance ports over the regular SNES version. As you can see and maybe hear, Yoshi's Island is one of the games that just doesn't run at full speed. The frame skip it is, but then it kind of feels a little faster than normal. Right after this I'm going to show the Game Boy Advance version playing just fine. Here's the Game Boy Advance version of Yoshi's Island, and it runs flawlessly. I don't have to enable frame skip or anything, and it feels just like the original. This part of the level in particular ran very poorly on the SNES emulator. 
I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but it runs perfect here. Here's some Game Boy Color emulation, and as to be expected, it runs flawlessly. Here's a Power Rangers game for the original Game Boy. This is Sonic Triple Trouble for the Genesis. I've tried out a lot of games on this so far. I've only beat a few though. I'm almost finished with Medal of Honor for the original PlayStation. And I think I'm getting pretty close to beating Mega Man Zero on the Game Boy Advance. Both of them I've had zero problems with so far. And then I've also beaten a couple Neo Geo Pocket games. This is Medal of Honor. And as you can see, it runs perfect. I haven't had any slowdowns so far in it. I've also tried a few other first person shooters. I've tried Doom and Quake 2. And the analog sticks work pretty well. I'd say they're maybe a little too sensitive. But they get the job done. So here's one of the games that actually does not run very well on this. This one is Dead or Alive for the PS1. As you can see, it's got major slowdowns, messing with the music and the sounds. Another game that also does this is Tekken 3, but that one you can turn frame skip on and it works. This one, even with frame skip, it will not run smoothly. Here's the list of the PS1 games that I've been playing, and all of them work fine so far, except for, like I said, Dead or Alive, and then Tekken 3, but that one works with frame skip, so the only one that doesn't work straight out that I've tried is Dead or Alive. And then the only other problem I have with it is the buttons. They feel nice when you're pushing them, however, they're just very high. As you can see, compared to the regular Game Boy Micro, the buttons are just extremely high, and even compared to something like a Joy-Con. It's still only annoying in certain games, but it can definitely mess you up. However, you do get used to it after a while, it's just a little different. Overall, I do believe that this is a good option if you want to play retro games handheld. Runs everything really smooth with PlayStation 1 and under, with a few exceptions. Those being the few SNES games that it doesn't run at full speed. 
you can run them with frame skip on. It just doesn't feel as natural as it would running regularly. And then there are a few PS1 games that it won't play at full speed either. And then some are just plain unplayable, but I think there's only a few of those ones. Besides for that, everything PS1 and under are going to run at full speed and you're going to have a good time with them. There's only one other negative about it and that's the buttons. I already went over that, so if you can get over the fact that they're just a little taller, then this would be a good pickup. I would say if you find it in the $80 to $100 range, I would go ahead and go for it because it's definitely worth it. Here I just want to show that it's it works well for fast paced games. And I should also mention that you can upgrade the firmware on this. I'm not sure if there's a new one out at the time of recording this, but I know they upgraded some of the emulators and you can add an N64 emulator onto it. However, it doesn't run most of the games even at all playable. So that's unfortunate, but if they keep working with them, it might actually be playable one day. I guess I should also mention that mine I bought off of Amazon and it actually came with a lot of games already pre-installed. So I didn't expect that, but it was a plus so I didn't have to go through and find all the games I want to download. But you can also get ROMs and load them up and they work perfectly fine. That was my review on the RG350. Let me know what you thought, and if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. I do videos here once a week, so if you want to check those out, hit subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.